Hello my friends, Yuri Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Starting a new, very unique project. In fact, while I've worked on this kind of thing before, I've never worked on it under these exact circumstances. So what's the mystery? Well, this, sort of. And you say, well, you've done those before, and yes, I have. The difference is, someone donated this to my cause. I can't remember if this was Eddie or someone else that sent me this, gave me this. But anyway, um, I appreciate the fact they gave it to me. I had it sitting up on a shelf. I was giving someone a shop tour here a month or so ago. In fact, I have a date here on this, I could be able to tell you. Actually, it was July 8th, so just about exactly a month ago. And when I was giving him the shop tour, he says, uh, what is that thing there? And I said, well, it's what you call either a banjo lin or a manjo. And so he gets it down and he's looking at it and he's pretty intrigued with it. He goes, he says, what would you have to have for it? I said, well, I really don't want to sell it for much because someone gave it to me and I don't, I don't feel like I should be profiting from that. And I said, how's $50 sound? He says, that sounds great. And, I, and then he wanted me to fix it. Well, there's where the money's gonna be. <laughs> you know, it's not for the, the cost of this. So I only charged him $50 for this, and the neck alone is probably worth that, if not more. That's a really nice neck in this. This is probably pretty old, this neck. I doubt the body and the neck are the same, you know, instrument. In fact, I'm 90% sure they're not. Not 100% sure, but, but about 90% sure. One of the reasons I'm fairly sure that they don't belong together is this is way short here. And there's this part's missing up here that would lock it in. I have to figure out how I'm gonna make this work for this fella. <laughs> I really don't know offhand, to be honest with you. I told him all that, you know, I told him, I said, I don't think all this matches just so you understand. He goes, I don't care. He says, I just want it to be playable. Okay. So here we go on a rather unique journey here. Well, I started by just taking a damp rag and wiping this down. I can tell there's been a lot of work done to this. This is not the original binding that was on this either, I don't think. Pretty sure it's not. I also noticed the pencil writing right here. Can you see that? It says $300. So I guess I sold it too cheap because just the neck alone is probably worth $300. Probably is, really. I mean, realistically, it probably is because this is a really ornate neck. Um, it's The neck by itself is pretty nice. This body is... Yeah, it's kind of average. It's kind of the middle of the road, the body, the resonator part. So now I got to figure out what am I going to do about all this. Um, it's been jammed together here and it's got leather poking in here and stuff. So I'm going to try to figure this all out. Probably do a little bit of thinking off camera before I uh, tell you what my plan is because I'm not sure yet. As far as I can tell, there's nothing holding this in except friction. So I'm tap on it lightly. This is a rubber mallet and hoping I can drive it out of there. I think it's moving. I think. Yeah, I think it's moving. There you go. So it was just held in by friction. We're going to have to do a little better than that. This is a uh, been glued here, this little strip. So I'm gonna start fresh from scratch. Little things like this don't do me much good, so I'm just gonna get rid of it all. I'm gonna start by just making this body here as good as possible. This, this particular one here doesn't seem to latch, so I'm gonna work on a few things like that first and tighten this head up and get that ready to go, and then we'll think about the rest of it. So this, this one here, it's, it's stuck on there, it doesn't unthread. And I wanna take it out and straighten it because it's uh, pretty, 
pretty bent and it maybe it's supposed to be a little bent but I the rest of them don't appear to be very bent so I'm gonna get rid of the bending on this one I think and then see if we can do something with it I'm trying to get it where I can hold it there we go I can hold it that way and then get a wrench on this maybe see if this little millimeter wrench fits it just too small of course the next millimeter is too big so in a case like that we will find my little metric crescent wrench I'm only kidding about the metric part uh, let's see here this is just a little tiny crescent wrench and it should at least fit it or I can hopefully turn this oh my gosh that's oh that's stripped or something there's just that won't go either direction that ain't good that's not a good way to start <laughs> that that will not turn I never thought that was gonna happen okay well I'll back up and punt and I'll show you what I end up doing I'm pretty good with straightening things so I put this little shim that was on the neck right there and then I'm just gonna pull down on this by hand and see if I can straighten that that helped it some do a little bit more I'm putting the shim there so I don't make a mark actually yeah I don't know I don't think the screws tight on the inside I, if it, when it rains it pours so I'm gonna tighten up the screw here on the inside to help hold it better all right so now I think what I'm gonna do is just tap it like this because I'm pretty good at this been doing it a long time that's pretty straight right there in fact that's almost perfectly straight but that that only solves the straightness problem now I gotta get it apart so I think to take it apart I'll just take it apart right here of course I'll save those screws and things and it does look pretty straight it's not perfect I can see another little bit of a bend in it that I could straighten out but I think what I'm going to try to do is hold this with a vice grips and heat this and then put a wrench on this and try to turn it because this is stuck. I mean like stuck like it's been, you know, cemented, cemented on in addition to the fact that it's really tight. Because it's possible someone may have used Loctite on that because I'm seriously telling you I was putting a lot of torque on it and it didn't move at all. I'm going to take a torch to this and heat this you know I'm not gonna try to get it red hot I'm just gonna heat it up and let's see if we can move it after that I'm gonna call that good for the first trial here that you know I didn't heat it solid I just kinda put it on there took it off put it on there took it off it's pretty hot though I imagine so if I can just get my little wrench to cooperate oh my Gosh, I can't believe that. That is not turning. Well, it's official. Nothing fits that. I checked all my uh, SAE wrenches. I checked all my metric wrenches. Nothing fits that. Not even close. Everything is way off. The seven millimeters way too small, eight millimeters way too big. You know, and then I tried quarter, uh, five sixteenths, and uh, I'm going to look and see if I have the one in between there, the, the something 30 seconds. I can't remember what that is offhand. Well, I checked all my drawers with all kinds of wrenches. I got more wrenches than Carter's got liver pills, and nothing fits this. So, we go to this. These are miniature vice grips. I'm trying to open it up where it'll just grab it nice and snug tight like that. Then I'm gonna heat the tar out of it, I guess, because heating it a little bit didn't help. I know it was pretty hot because I could actually feel the heat in the wrench. But I'm gonna heat it up more. My guess is there is something in there, Loctite or something, because it's crazy hard to move. Look at that. Even with that, I don't, I don't think I'm breaking it loose. There, I think I just broke it loose. Just broke it loose right there, I think. Wow, that was tight. It's breaking, it's coming loose, but just barely, I'll tell you. 
and it's hot. I'm telling, I can feel it in the in the tool. It's that hot. So whatever it was, it was either stuck with something or jammed on there so tight that the heat changed it. If I had tried to get that off there, I guarantee I would have twisted it off. Guarantee. No question about it. It was that tight. Now I'm going to cool it off. I got some water. It's you can hear it. I heard it fizzle right there, steam or whatever you want to call it. So I'm putting that cold water on it from the towel. That ought to dissipate the heat fairly quickly where I can hopefully touch it with my fingers. Pretty warm still, but it's not, oh, it's still really tight. Oh my gosh, can't believe how tight that is. They definitely had something going on there. I'm not exactly sure what it was. It does not appear to be gold exactly. Although it's been cut off, so it could just be that the threads weren't real good on it. We'll move on from there. But well, once again, I tried every tap I had out there, or every die in this case, for this, and uh, nothing fit it real well. 1024 worked, but it was very loose on there, very loose. So I've got the 1024 tap, the match to it, and I'm gonna run it in here and see if it'll go in here. And I have a feeling it's not even gonna start. And it's not, it's not even gonna start. That doesn't make sense. I really don't know what to make of this. Nothing, nothing matches this at all. I only took this part out there because that's usually all I would need, but because nothing really fit that, 1024, like I said, actually thread on it. It seemed like it went okay, but it was very loose. So I brought the 1024 out here thinking that it might fit this, but not a chance. It's way too big. I really don't know what to do. Well, I think I misspoke a while ago and I said something about SAE. I, I don't know. I had my acronyms confused. But anyway, I checked, uh, you know, both... Um, Imperial and metric and absolutely nothing fits this. And I, I have a lot to check, trust me. You know, I've got several sets of taps and dies and things and not one single thing came close to working on this. Size-wise, it's close to a six. In terms of thread-wise, it's a coarse thread. It, the 1024 thread was the closest thread but size-wise, 1024 won't even start in here. So if I had a 624, it'd probably be pretty close to working, but I don't even think that's a, a thing. I'm confused. And it, you know, it only goes in so far and it gets tight really fast. So, I don't know. All else fails, throw some oil in there. I already cleaned up the ends of this thread so that they, they're not catching anymore. And you can see it does thread in pretty far, but then it just gets instantly tight. And I don't think it's supposed to get instantly tight right there. So the only other thing I can think of is that someone just forced it in there until it kind of made its own threads. That's about the only other thing I can think of. I mean, it does thread okay for the first four or five threads. Nothing matches this. This is not boogered up. This part here is is right, and yet nothing matches that. If I can't find anything to match this, obviously I can't find anything to match the inside. So I don't know what to do other than to use new parts, and I hate to do that. Although as I look at this, I can see there are multiple different kinds of parts on this. Wonder if I take one of these other ones off, will it thread in this thing further, or is it the same difference? Again, there's no wrench that fits it. There's it's very strange. It's going to be a real pain to tighten this up. I probably picked the only one that's really tight or something here. Cannot get that loose. It figures. Yeah, that one's really tight too, so something's going on weird about this. It's not near as tight as this first one was, but it's it's like it's not turning loose. It's staying tight the whole way. I don't get that. Never had this before with these things. This, they usually just kind of work. 
All right, so I just want to see if this one goes in there about the same, doing exactly the same thing, going in about so far and it gets real tight again. So it's not gonna do me any good to exchange things around. My gosh, I can't believe how tight that is. It's ridiculous. Before I put it back on there, I guess I'll put oil on it at least. My goodness. May have to replace them all because none of them are working very good and you can tell they've all been cut off. So somebody has done something to try to modify something here. And I don't know what the modify is, but it ain't good. There it's getting tight again. So right there is where it's tight. Well, that's just kind of wrecked my whole thought process on this thing. Looks like the threads go down in there quite a bit further. I can't figure out why it just stops at one spot like that. Because it threads good right there at the end. Oh well. Okay, I spent more time trying to decide what the problem was with this, and I still am totally drawn a blank. It's the first time that's ever happened in my life on these things. I can usually find a thread that works. I cannot find anything that works on these either way. They seem to thread in pretty easy, and they go in relatively deep. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they're actually bottoming out or not. I'm gonna to try to unscrew this and show you how much thread is going in there. So it's going in pretty deep. It's going in that deep. So what I did was on this one, since this one wouldn't get tight, I took and ground the bottom of it off a couple of threads. And then I also cleaned the end of that up. by If you take and rotate a screw into your grinder with the grinder cutting down and you rotate the screw like that, it will make the threads perfect on the end every time. And as you can see, it did. It works perfectly. It goes in there. So I'm going to see if this slightly shortened screw will tighten up now because it wouldn't tighten before. And if so, then I think that's what we're going to do to anything and everything that needs to be tightened. And of course now, I can't get the thing through there. That's why it was probably bent. The rest of them don't look like they're bent and they go through there. This has definitely been cobbled up. This is not the way this is supposed to go exactly. Well, I'm going to have to loosen that up to get that through there and then tighten it down after I get it tight, I suppose. There's more than one way to skin a cat. So I'll get it through there. I can see that the amount of thread that's sticking through is still just barely gonna be tight, tightenable, but I hope it'll be enough. It's crazy. I do think it actually does need to be bent, but it needs to be bent in a pre very precise way to make these work well. So, I don't know. I may end up having to take this whole thing apart, reworking all the hardware on it. That's gonna really be a bummer. So it needs to, it needs to bend down and then back straight. <sighs> and that's not easy to do because, you know, it's got this tang on it. So I can't hook, set it in the vise very well because of that tang. The only way I can see to do it would be to uh, stick the tang out the end here. And that's not a good way to do this. It's not the way I want to do it. This looks like a piece of maple or something, which would be pretty good. And then maybe take this and bend it right there. It looked like it did its job. That's about right. Maybe might be too much. Uh, it almost looks like it's going to crack it even. And then it's got to come back the other way. This is not pretty. Okay, you can see here that I've bent it two ways. That's what it really takes to fit this, I think. Yep, that makes it fit much better. Okay, so... With that fit there, that's the only one that's really fitting well. All the rest of them are kind of cockeyed. 
tighten this up and see if it will actually tighten up the rim, which I'm not sure it will yet. I kind of think I'm still going to have to shorten it. That seems like it's putting some pressure on it. It hasn't bottomed out yet. It's better than it's been. I bet you none of the rest of these will work because I bet you they're, yeah, they're all bottomed out. I can tell they're bottomed out by the way they're acting. Hold on to that with that and loosen this. I have a feeling this is going to take a lot of time. Yeah, that one came loose easier than the other one. But it's still very tight. Ah. Just can't get the goofy little wrench. These little adjustable wrenches are just not very good, and it's the only thing that fits this. This is going to take a month of Sundays if I have to keep doing this. So I don't know what to do. Like I said, there's not a single wrench that fits this. And I have a lot of wrenches to choose from, trust me. You know, this stuff's hard enough to do when the parts work, but when the parts don't work, gee whiz. I still, there it goes, finally. Right at the, the last two threads, I could undo it by hand. Oh my gosh. So I guess I'm gonna to do the exact same thing. I'm gonna to have to bend this and Shorten this to get it to tighten up. Bomber. Looks like every one of them is going to need that because the head can't be tightened the way it is. The head, it, everything's at max tension and the head is loose. I mean, all the screws are at max tension and the head is loose. Oh man, this is not fun at all. Trying to decide where to bend it there again. And for somebody saying, well, just measure it. Well, you got to still use your measurement every time. So you might as well just hold it up there and fit it to that. Same difference. In fact, it's probably easier because trying to hold a tape on all that and try to measure it is not very easy either. It's probably as much as it needs, if not more than it needs. It's not good to hold something by its threads, but I don't have too many choices here. That looks pretty good. That put the perfect bend in it, if you ask me. So now I'm going to go grind the end of it off to shorten it. I've decided I'm going to take this whole thing apart, work on all of it at once. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best approach. I made a wrench that fits these nuts and it's 280, roughly 83 thousandths, somewhere in there, 283 thousandths, which if you get to a decimal equivalent is about 930 seconds. And I don't have a wrench like a 930 seconds. Now, you know, that actually sounds familiar, like I might have one, but I couldn't find one. And the reason I use this wrench is fairly obvious. The other end is broken off. So I should be able to at least now take these apart rather quickly compared to what I was doing. The only problem with that rather quickly statement is that these other ends have to be held because these are all tight as they can be. So for, for camera purposes, I'll hold it like this and do one or two this way. And I'll just hold it with those pliers and then Take the wrench, get it on there, and it does fit it really well. It fits the nuts perfectly tight. Now here's the first one it's not going to fit probably. Nope, that's it's made different. This one's made different, but it fits it anyway. So that's good. I'm not going to make you watch me do all this. I just thought I'd show you that I at least have gotten off a of square one. And then a lot of these are so rusty, I got to take this all apart so I can take them to the wire wheel, clean up the rust, and I want to wire wheel this, this uh, rim. It's pretty bad too. It's a chrome rim, but, you know, hard nickel rim or something. And anyway, we've just got to get it all cleaned up. It's a mess. 
So I'm gonna do all this disassembly off camera. Well, that was simple. Not. Oh my goodness, that was really hard. I'm sure glad I took the time to make the wrench that fits those things because that saved hours, I'm sure. And there you go, I pulled that apart. This was meant to be, I don't know, I want to say it was meant to be an arch top, but I ain't sure of that. It's got this ring in here that really serves no purpose anymore. Um, I'm not even sure where they had that in there. It's probably just to take up space so that the things are the right length, I guess. I really don't know. I'm wore out now, so I'm going to figure it all out tomorrow. It's the next day in the saga of this banjo Lin, and we have gotten the thing apart and we're moving on a little bit. We've got a problem, Houston. Look at there, we got a cracked head, so we're gonna have to put a new head on this. Yeah, that's not good. Well, I'll look around and see if I would happen to have a spare one of these. It'd be a miracle if it'd be the same size. It might even be a miracle if we can even get one the right size. After finding that that other head was uh, bad, I found this one, which is a, it seems to fit just right. It's, it seems like it's the same size, so I'm just going to use this one. And it's, you know, it's been used, but I'm not going to charge him for it, and at least it'll make the thing function, you know? It's not like it's a permanent thing. You can always put a different head on it if somebody wants to do that. Next thing I'm gonna do is turn myself to the chrome on this and try to clean it up. And in a few places it's nice. And I don't know if this is nickel or if this is chrome, I don't know. Uh, I doubt these are the same vintage. If it was the vintage of the neck, I would say this is nickel for sure. But the vintage that the rest of it may be, this could be chrome, I really don't know. But I'm gonna try cleaning it up a little bit. And I'm gonna start with the uh, semi-chrome polish and see if that works. If it does, great, I'll use that. If not, then I'll move on to something else. So typically to use this, I just dampen down a little bit of my blue cloth. Just put a little dab of the semi-chrome on here. You don't need very much. And then I just start in a spot here. You can see this is pretty bad right in here. And I'll just see what it does. And sometimes it just works a miracle and it just makes it perfect. Other times, not so much. It just depends on the corrosion and the problem. Well, in between the, the dots, it makes it really shiny, that's for sure. But there is a lot of dots on here, uh, just corrosion type stuff. Uh, I may just leave that and just shine it up the best I can shine it up this way and call that good enough. Because if you take off much more of that, if you try to get much more of it off, you'll end up with bare metal. Well, it looks better. I wouldn't say it looks great, but it looks better. So I guess anytime you're making it look better, you're doing something right. I'm going to check here and see if I can scrape this black off of here. There's something on there that polish didn't seem to affect and that knocked most of it off so maybe I can get the rest of it out with the polish. So that's shining up pretty good. I'll go ahead and just finish the rest of it by hand and show you what it looks like when I'm finished. This was the worst place on it and this was really rough here. Uh, it still feels, you can still feel it, but it looks a lot shinier than it did. It was just brown rust before. Uh, the top of this has got some rust on it. And I guess we'll clean that up too because that does get exposed. You do see that. So we'll try to see if we can clean up the top edge also. But honestly, this may be more difficult because it's pretty rough. And I don't really want to take it to the wire wheel because I think the wire wheel would just tear it up. Although I might be able to get by on this rim, just right on the edge, I might be able to get that on the wire wheel. You never know. This one area here, and I would assume, because that's where the neck goes, I would assume that's right where the arm has been laying and it's gotten it all rusty and crusty there from the arm, you know. 
So that's what I'm sure that's from. You can only do what you can do. And that's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get that, I believe. So we'll move on to the next thing. So I'm gonna use the bottle kinda like a, uh, a syringe and just force it down in there, if it'll go down in there. And it seemed to go pretty good. Then I'll maybe take a toothpick or something and try to work it down in there a little bit more. Can't really do that very good because the crack's pretty small. But I'll just keep kind of rubbing it back and forth there and the hydraulic pressure a lot of times will push down in there a little bit more. And I can squeeze it a little bit and get the pumping action going. It'll probably get down in there deep enough. Okay, so what I do now is just take and put a clamp on that. And hopefully you can see that it's squeezing glue out of the crack now. You can see how much glue came out of the crack because there was no glue there at all when I first did that. So I'll let that set and do its thing. And then that way this rim should be solid. There's a little bit of something here on the rim, but yeah, there is something there. But I think that is a veneer thing and I think I'm gonna get that with CA glue because there's, well, I mean, I could clamp it, but I don't know where it goes, and the CA glue will get in there better and go everywhere. So I'm just going to do that, because I do think it's a veneer issue more than anything else. I'll go ahead and put the same kind of rubber clamp there, because I don't think the CA glue will stick to this rubber. And then I'll just squeeze her down like that, let her set. That ought to solve that problem, too. While that rim is uh, doing its thing, I'm going to turn my attention to this hardware. This hardware uh, doesn't fit this very well at all. What I had to do was I had to shorten these first because these would screw up tight and be tight and yet they weren't pulling down on the, on the uh, skin head. In this case, it's a plastic head, but it doesn't matter. The point is it wouldn't tighten it. And so I shortened these three first. In addition to that, they didn't clear the rim very well. And so I, if you can see here, put a very subtle bend and then a back and then straight down. So there's, a, there's kind of like an offset bend. These are straight. You can see the difference. This one has an offset bend. I think you can see it. The, this one here is offset. It's probably hard to see it, but it's there. Anyway, I have to put that little bend in all of these, shorten them all to the length of these, and, you know, just a lot of work. So I'm going to get started doing all of that while the other parts are drying. Okay, now that I've got all of these to the right length and uh, reground, in other words, I, after I grind them to the length, then I turn them up this way and grind the ends of them off on a bevel. That makes sure they'll thread in. Like I haven't tested this one yet, but I'm pretty positive it'll thread right on. They pretty much always do once you do that. Yep, see it threads right on. All of these are a little bit tight. I don't know exactly why, but they're all a little tight. That's probably better than loose because that way they don't vibrate loose as easy. The next thing I gotta do is put this little bend in these to make it look kinda like that. The rest of them are straight, so I have a little bit of work to do there. I'm, I'm just gonna kinda get a pattern going here, and after I get it established, I'll show you what I'm doing to bend that. Okay, it's a little bit of a procedure here, but I kinda mark off where I want the bend to go, and I've got that marked. So then I just take and hit this like so. Well, that one, I didn't have it tight enough when you know, on camera, of course. All right, so there you go. So get it, and I bend it a little bit like that. Doesn't have to bend too much, just kind of an eyeball thing. And then I put the threads and everything in the vise. And I know some of you are gonna be yelling at me that you shouldn't put threads in a vise, but I don't have too many options and it's just easier. So that's why I'm doing it. I know better, but I know better too. So there you go. And then I just take and, and, and you know, between the threads and the part that's bent, I bend the shaft back again, and I just have to hit it till I'm convinced it's about right, and that looks about right to me. 
So now it has that little offset bend in it, and I think that's gonna be fine. I keep using the same one as my pattern so I get them all about the same. And like the way that I get the pattern on there is I just draw it across there in about the same place each time. Put it in the vise this way. It would probably be easier if I put it in the vise facing away from me, but, and then I can just tap it. Of course, it helps if it stays still, but it doesn't always stay still. Like that, that's pretty close. And then I can put the threads and a little piece of the shaft in the vise, tighten it down pretty good, and then tap it back that way till it's straight. That's pretty straight, so there you go. Well, I'll just keep doing that until I don't feel like doing it anymore. If you happen to be keeping score, it's the next day. And I think I've got all the hardware bent into shape. So I'm going to try now to uh, start putting this thing together and see what it does. We'll put all these parts in here first. I, don't, I think I'm just going to put them in hand tight to begin with. Here's one that's really cruddy looking, really dirty compared to the rest of them. I think I'll just set up my vise here and lay things like this on here where I can kind of hold them and brush them at the same time and get the creeping crud off of them. Because that's really what that looks like. It doesn't really look like it's rust. It looks like creeping crud. Well, that looks a whole lot better. My goodness. It's like this thing has just been complicated from the start. Well, it looks like a lot of these are really dirty. So I guess I'm gonna have to clean all these up before I get serious about putting it together. Got ahead of the video here. I started putting this together. I cleaned up these parts, got them all on there. And I really thought this part would go fairly simple, but it's not. It's, it's very difficult. It is working and it's gonna work well when I'm done, but it's just, these parts just, I don't know, they don't seem to fit together all that well or something and I've had to make everything fit. It's gonna work just fine. I just gotta have my patience and get it done, I guess. Well, I think that's all I'm going to show you there. Just putting them on. I've got a few more to put on here, and then we'll. What we'll do next is we'll tighten this up to a certain note. Well, I got all the hardware back on this thing. Makes a pretty good drum. I don't know what note it is. You know, I know my mandolins typically play good at a B flat, so I'm just going to see if we're in a, we're near a B flat. It's hard to tell with these kinds of things sometimes too. That says an E. Ah, now it's saying an A, so I can't hardly tell. It's, that's why I say these things can lie to you. saying an A so we'd have to go up a little bit to get to a B flat so I'm gonna take it up a little bit all the way around um, I'm just gonna start here and just put about a half a cr crank on each one of them now that one's loose so I'll have to put a little bit more on it that's the thing about these things you tighten one and the other ones would get loose Just trying to tighten them a little bit, not trying to go crazy tight. A little bit goes a long way on this kind of thing. 
We may have gone past our B flat. It's, it wouldn't surprise me because when you tighten these up just a little bit on every one of them, it makes a big difference. It'd be kind of cool if we would land on that, but I would bet we've probably passed it up. That was what I would bet. Okay, so let's tap on it again and see if we're anywhere near a B flat. Well, quite honestly, I'm not getting as good a reading as I was before. Yeah, I'm getting a G or C. Hell, I don't really know. It's just hard to tell with these things. I'm getting a G more, more than anything else. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna stop there. The head feels fairly good and tight. You know, you gotta have them pretty tight, otherwise when you put your bridge on there, this is just gonna mash it down. And it may still mash it down. We may have to tighten it some more. But I, you know, I don't claim to be the expert with banjo lens, so we're just doing what we think makes sense. And right now, that this seems to make sense, so let's go to the next step. Yeah.